Welcome to the lesson on human nutrition. In this lesson, we'll be discussing um, the scientific definition of a calorie. We'll also discuss energy containing nutrients, tissue building nutrients, and the usefulness of water, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and we'll also highlight four disorders of the digestive system. Let's go ahead and get started with the scientific definition of a calorie. Notice that our word calorie here um, has a, is started with a capital C. Make sure you do that as well because there's a difference between the word calorie with a capital C and the word calorie with a lowercase c. And we'll explain that here in a moment. A calorie is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. So the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. A calorie spelled with a capital C is also called a food calorie. So when you look at a label um, on a um, box of whatever you're going to eat and it tells you you have that, that contains so many calories those are food calories. A food calorie is equal to 1,000 lowercase c calories. Now, this unit right here, uh, a calorie with, spelled with lowercase c, is a calorie that you'll learn about in chemistry. And a calorie in chemistry is the, temp is the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Well, the difference between one gram and one kilogram is that one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So it should make sense to you that one food calorie is equal to 1,000 chemistry calories. Okay? Just it's real important that you understand that when you look at a label on something you're going to eat, that when they tell you it contains, this food contains so many calories, that that is a food calorie they're referring to and not a chemistry calorie. All right, next let's take a look at some energy-containing nutrients. And we'll start with proteins. Proteins have four food calories per gram on average. Carbohydrates also have four calories per gram, whereas fats contain nine calories, food calories per gram. Okay, so you can see the benefit of eating proteins and carbohydrates over eating fats. Proteins and carbohydrates also, if we eat them in excess, become fat stored in our body. And you can see why it takes a long time to burn that fat because there's more calories needed per gram to do that. Next, tissue building nutrients. We have fats that build um, cell membranes, also for cushioning and for hormone synthesis. Proteins are used also in building cell membranes for structure and for building muscle, skin, and bone. Water is an important nutrient that is used for transport within our body. It's also used as a solvent, and that means that it's used to dissolve chemicals, and also, as you may remember, in the process of hydrolysis. Vitamins are coenzymes in metabolic reactions. And for vitamins, the term that you need to understand is RDA. What does RDA mean? RDA stands for the recommended daily allowance. There are two types of vitamins. There are oil soluble vitamins. And examples of these are vitamin A, D, E, and K. And too much of these vitamins can lead to toxicity. That means that they can become poisonous to your body. And there are water-soluble vitamins, the B-complex vitamins and C vitamins. And overdoses on these won't harm you, but they can lead to what, are, what is called a rebound deficiency. We also have minerals that are, have various uses of importance in our body. Calcium, which is important for growth of bones and teeth, also important in muscle contraction and blood clotting. Phosphorus is important for the both 
the growth of bones, teeth, also in the production of ATP and DNA synthesis. Iron is important for hemoglobin production. Iodine is important for thyroid function. And sodium, which mostly we get from salt, is important for water balance in the blood and also helps with nerve function. Lastly, we have fiber. Fiber is mostly cellulose from plant material. It is undigestible, but is necessary to keep food mass soft. Okay, next let's take a look at four disorders of the digestive system. And we're going to start off with talking about the most popular one you're most familiar with, which is ulcers. An ulcer is a hole, um, and there are a hole in your digestive system, and there are three types of ulcers. There's an esophageal ulcer, which is a hole in your esophagus, gastric ulcer, which is a hole in your stomach, and a duodenal ulcer, which is a hole in your small intestine. This is a close-up of what an ulcer looks like on the lining of the stomach. Pretty nasty. You can see they also bleed. Next we'll talk about pyloric stenosis. To understand this, you need to understand the parts here um, that lead to this. And we have the esophagus that leads into the stomach, that leads into the duodenum, which becomes the small intestine. Well, between the, the stomach and the duodenum is, the, is this muscle called the pylorus. If the pylorus becomes enlarged, it causes pyloric stenosis and, and creates difficulties in food getting from the stomach to the duodenum, which is the beginning of the small intestine. This can be fixed by an incision, which allows that muscle to relax. And that would require an operation to do that, of course. The next disorder of the digestive system we'll take a look at is GERD. And GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease. This is a disorder in the lower esophagus sphincter which is between the esophagus and the stomach. When it's closed, um, that functions normally, but if that sphincter opens, it allows reflux or um, gastric juices from the stomach to flow back up into the esophagus. This causes a burning sensation, um, sometimes known as heartburn, okay? And um, that is not good because it erodes the wall of the esophagus. This acid in your stomach is very, very strong. The last disorder of the digestive system we'll take a look at here is celiac sprue. Celiac sprue is caused by a protein called gluten, which, prevents, which in turn prevents absorption of nutrients in the small intestine. So you may hear of people that go on a gluten-free diet, for example, and that's because they are having trouble absorbing nutrients in their small intestine. Okay, And you will learn all about these structures more in detail when we study the digestive system. But your small intestine has these little structures called villi in them, which are simply function to increase the surface area to increase absorption of nutrients. Gluten prevents that absorption, and that becomes a problem because people don't get the nutrients they need. People go on a gluten-free diet, um, tend to feel healthier because they're getting more nutrients absorbed through their small intestine. That'll do it for our notes on human nutrition. Now let's take a look at this video, which will go more in depth on these concepts.